again, sir. Maybe I'm seeing things, Colonel. No, you're not seeing things. It was there all right. Oak Ridge area. Must have been right over the town. No telling where it is by now. I've seen UFOs before, Colonel, but never one like this. You'd have to travel pretty fast to move around the range the way this thing's doing. It's 50 miles a second, as a matter of fact. Think it could be some kind of missile? Not at 180,000 miles an hour. There isn't a missile made that comes near that. Just like all the other reports, one contact in an area, maybe two, then nothing. Air Defense Command says the bogey's been picked up all around the globe today. Washington wants us to keep a close check on it. Close check on what? I wish I knew. What kind of craft can possibly fly over our military posts and cities in broad daylight without being seen or heard? There isn't any kind of craft that can do that. There has to be some kind of explanation for this, Matthews. Oh, I think we'll find it. Some kind of light aberration or temperature inversion has happened before. Those blips were pretty solid, Colonel. Yes, I know they were. I know they've been picked up all over the country. And I also know that any object going through the atmosphere at that rate of speed would completely disintegrate. I think we'd better take this up with Pacific Tech. They may be able to throw some light on it. I don't think we'll be confronted with any problem. We can't answer for ourselves, General. Yes, I know we have a staff of top scientists in uniform. There are also some top civilians available to us if we need them. The way things are today, we can't afford to take any chances. Colonel Matthews speaking. General? Hmm. No one here. Well? Where'd you say? Yes. Yes, of course. We'll have someone up there to investigate right away. Thank you. Goodbye. Forest rangers have found some kind of an object up in the mountains in the canyon near Bear Lake. Now that's uh, not far out of Oak Ridge. What kind of object? Ball-shaped thing. Said it looked like a satellite. Could be the UFO. You better get up there and check it out. Hope it isn't another saucer scare. Well, for that reason, I won't make a report till I hear from you. Better take a radio car. Yes, sir. Now the rangers will be waiting for you to turn off at the lake, just past Grant's Lodge. Let me know what you find out. Yes, sir. Get me uh, Dr. Carl Sorensen, Pacific Tech, Astrophysics Department. A canyon near Bear Lake, that'd be Stone Canyon. Yes. We'd like very much if you could go up there. Well, I can make it up there within an hour. That'll be fine, Doctor. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be of assistance. Goodbye. Probably one of their experimental projects. All right, where is this object? Over in the canyon. Just a short ways, over that rise. Funny how these Pacific Tech fellas get around. Must have come in by the back fire road. Down there, sir. What do you make of it, Colonel? I don't know. Let's get a closer look at it. What's that?
Sergeant Matthews? That's right. I'm Carl Sorensen, Pacific Tech. General Nolan asked me to meet you here. He thought I might be of some help. That figures. Well, what have you decided? I see you have your radiation equipment on operation. Uh, there's radiation around here, all right. But I haven't yet figured out what kind. You think it's safe for us to go down there? Well, I can't say for certain that it's safe for us to go down there, Colonel, but as far as radiation is concerned, it's as safe down there as it is here. I guess you're right about that. Let's go. What is this thing, Colonel? From outer space? As a calculated guess, I'd say it was. Well, you won't find anything under there. Metal? Something like this. More like glass. Seems fairly solid at the thick skin, anyway. What are the chances that something's inside? What do you think? I'd say no. No ports, no seams. Instruments, probably. Most likely some kind of observation unit, wouldn't you say? Something like that. I mean, I don't think any kind of living thing could be in there. Well, not as we know it, anyway. No, you're, you're probably right. It's uh, instruments. Ray, return to the car and radio the air base. Tell them to send an art guard detail here immediately. Equipped for field duty. Inform the general, I'll give him a full report presently. Yes, right away, Colonel. I'll have to ask you to keep completely quiet about this, for the present, anyway. Yeah, I guess the folks down in Oak Ridge would get panicky if they knew there was some kind of mysterious object up here. You can count on me, Colonel. Good. Any idea what keeps this thing off the ground? Defying the law of gravity. Well, it's something like gravity in reverse, I think, like uh, anti-gravity. Anti-gravity? Never heard of a force like that. Well, for years, it's been nothing but a theory. But then again, I've never seen an object from interstellar space before, either. Knowledge of what makes this thing work could be the greatest military weapon of all time. Space supremacy could be ours overnight. They do say knowledge is power. That's right. There are two kinds of power, constructive and destructive. Now, you talk of space supremacy and weapons. I say that's the wrong type of thinking. I guess you're entitled to your opinion. Look, Colonel. This object has obviously traveled millions of miles through outer space. Some intelligence has caused it to be here. Some technology far superior to ours. Where it came from, how it got to be here, what it's here for, those are the important questions. I believe it's a question of which team you're on. There's only one team now, Colonel, ever since Hiroshima. The military and science are one and the same now. I agree with you, Dr. Sorensen. And for that reason, I'm sure I won't have any trouble getting all the expert help I need to find out what makes this thing tick. You may need more than that. Who or whatever caused this object to be here is obviously going to maintain some sort of control over its fate. You may be right, I don't know, but I'll soon find out. General Nolan requested your aid on this project. He must have had good reasons. It's up to you, Sorensen. Guard detail's on its way, Colonel. Should be here in a couple of hours. Good. Get General Nolan for me. Yes, sir. Hello, Bill. What's all the activity? Hi, Kathy. What do you say, Ken? Hi. I hear you found a strange object up here. Some people think it's one of our satellites. What is it, a flying saucer? Pardon me, ma'am. Would you mind telling me who told you about this? How could people find out about it so soon? Who knows? Party line, probably. You know how small towns are. That's how I found out. Why? Is it a military secret? It was, or so I thought. This is Colonel Matthews, Kathy, from Air Force Intelligence. Hello. My father was in the Air Force. He was a jet pilot in the war. Wasn't he, Mother? He was a football star, too. Yes, that's right, Ken. 
Is that what you want to be, Ken? Football star or jet pilot? No, sir, I... Uh... How are things at the lodge, Kathy? You about set for the winter? The last guest left this morning. Excuse me. What's your plan, Colonel? First, make a report to the general. Second, cut a road and get some equipment in here and move that thing back to the air base. Third, find out what's inside. It'll be pretty quiet around here until spring, I guess. Kathy owns the lodge up here. Well, I planned on using your place as a headquarters. I hope you can accommodate us. Yes, of course. We've lots of room. Take over any time, Colonel. That's the kind of cooperation I like. Consider yourself in the hands of the military. Colonel Matthews, General Nolan is standing by. Pardon me. I'm Carl Sorensen. I may also be on your guest list. Dr. Carl Sorensen? The astrophysicist? That's right. Mother? He's a famous scientist who discovered Omicron radiation. Was well, that so? I've read some of your books. I'm not sure I understand it all, though. Well, perhaps we ought to sit down sometime and discuss the parts you don't understand. Honest? That'd sure be swell. As you can see, you have an admirer. Ken wants to be an astronomer when he grows up. I can see that. We can certainly use you, Ken. Do you plan to stay at the lodge tonight, then, Dr. Sorensen? Well, that uh, actually depends on what happens between now and then. With your strange object, you mean? Is something supposed to happen? Do you expect something to develop, Doctor? I'm not sure about that either. I see. Well, it was nice talking to you. Goodbye. Bye, ma'am. Don't forget, we're going to have a conference. I won't forget. <laughs> All right, Matthews. Now, the heavy equipment won't get in there till tomorrow morning. Just keep the area well posted. Give out no information. How are you and Dr. Sorensen getting along? Oh, we're great pals. He just pulled out. You mean he's left? He's coming back, isn't he? I'm afraid so, General. I hope so. We need him on this operation. Pardon me, General. But surely this Sorensen isn't the only scientist we can call upon. His attitude's conflicting. I don't think he gives a hang about the military. Never mind his attitude. He has his reasons. Just try and work with him. I'll try, sir. But you know how these civilians are. I guess I should have told you before. Carl Sorensen holds the rank of Major General in the Reserves. Secondly, if it hadn't been for Sorensen, we may never have had the A-bomb. How would you feel if you were a man responsible for such a weapon? I understand, General. Right. Maybe we've been wrong all these years. Maybe there isn't such a force as gravity pulling everything toward the center of the Earth. Now, suppose there is this unknown cosmic ray, a particle similar, let's say, to X-ray, pressing in on everything, pushing everything down in proportion to its mass. Now, let's assume that there is such a, such a force. If we could control it, we might be able to to make an object such as that sphere move when we wanted to and stay suspended when we wanted to. Are you with me, Rich? Carl, why is it every time I'm almost able to prove out one of your theories, you come up with a new one that proves I'm all wrong? Anti-gravitar. Imagine what my students would say if tomorrow morning I should walk into the class and say, students, if you drop an apple from that window, it would not fall to the ground. The larger body does not attract the smaller one, as we have always thought. No students, the apple will be pushed to the ground because Dr. Sorensen says it's so. <laughs> you know you're on the right track, Rich? I am. Yeah. Here, let me show you something. <clears throat> Suppose we had some sort of a control device within this sphere whereby we could screen off any portion of this surface. Uh, call it a type of deflector. With it, we could control the speed and direction of this object. You know, it is an interesting speculation. Rich, I need help. I need your answers. Well, I can run some figures through Univac. We'll save some time. Good. 
Let me know what you come up with. I'll be at the lodge or else in my office. Oh, Carl, yes. what about the solar motor? You said yesterday was top priority. Well, that was yesterday. Today it's second top priority. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm stuck anyway. Something's wrong right here in the photon chamber. I'm sure your theory is right, Carl. I must have made a mistake. No one has ever made a mistake before. Don't worry. You'll come up with the answers. I know you will. And uh, top secret again? You know where to draw the line. It is unfortunate. How much more all of us could learn without these international barriers? <clears throat> My plan is to have a road cut around through here. Then you can move your equipment in, you can back it directly under the object. Shouldn't be any problem. A bulldozer will take care of it in a couple of hours. Good. I'd like this thing on the Air Force Base by early tomorrow evening. Yes, sir. Pardon me, sir. There's another newsman outside. Tell him the same as the others. You'll have to check with General Nolan. I did, sir. He said he thinks someone's passing the buck. Tell him he's probably right. Any sign of Dr. Sorensen? No, sir. Shall I try his office again? No, no, no. We can't do much until morning anyway. Everything's secure up in Stone Canyon. Yes, sir. Last radio report said that the entire area is completely surrounded. All roads are posted. Good, that's all, Emigre. Major, I think we'll find data and instruments inside this thing that'll put us far in the lead in the race into space. I'm going up to the lodge on some official business. Now, you're in charge. I don't want any goofing off, you understand? Right. No goofing off. You know the orders. No one is allowed in or out of this canyon unless authorized. Right. No one is allowed in or out. What do you mean, out of the canyon? Hey, is there somebody in this area besides us? Look, is Those there are any... the orders, Corporal. That's all I know. Why don't you guys start getting jittery? Hey. What, what's that? What's what? Over there. Something moved in the shadow. There's nothing out there. Now, look, don't start seeing things. Oh, I, I was sure I saw something. Probably an owl or a rabbit or something. It's nothing, kid. Now, take it easy. Yeah. Just our imagination. That's right, so don't let it run away with you. You guys settle down. What are you looking for, anyway? What's the matter with you? What are you doing out here? Well, I thought I heard something. Somebody walking. Thought it was nothing, I guess. Oh, I think you need a furlough, buddy. Colonel Matthews around? Yeah, but he's busy right now. Anything important? No, it'll wait. Heard something. Somebody walking. <laughs> Like the sunny islands. Okay, Mom, that'll be 180. My date will take care of it. He'll be right back. Just between you and me, Miss. That Colonel you're with is a pretty nice guy. Oh, tell me more. Just as I thought. 
flirting with the bartender behind my back. Well, he was telling me that for an Air Force officer, you're a pretty nice guy. Oh, I take it you don't go for men in uniform. I'll apply for my discharge immediately. That's the same thing Bill said on our first date. And you married him anyway? Three months later, Korea. I never saw him again. You want to talk about it? No. Ken summed it up earlier anyway. I'm sorry about Ken. Must be pretty rough on you. Not too. He's a good boy. He's the one that's got it rough. He studies so hard. Science, mostly. He wants to do so many things when he grows up. The poor darling will never get to do any of them. How long? Six months. A year, maybe. The doctors don't really know. Why? Why don't they know? With all the progress we're making, why don't they know the answer? Why can't a little boy have an equal chance? I don't know. I wish I did. Hey, our favorite tune. How about this dance? I thought you'd never ask me. Pardon me, Colonel. The General's on the radio. He has a message for you. Oh, great. 24 hours, Nolan, they call him. Excuse me. you see in there? I don't know what I saw. It was moving and it was... Stay with it, Gray. I'll be right back. Yes, sir. Nothing, sir. The MP's over there. Been around all the time. But they haven't seen anyone come or go. But, Colonel, I, I, I want to tell you about something. What is it, Sergeant? Well, it may sound kind of funny, but... A little while ago, and just as I pulled into the parking lot, when I turned off my lights, I heard these crazy noise. Oh, <laughs> 
town's in an uproar. You know, most of the people think we've been invaded or something. Can't blame them, I guess. What about Univac? Every tape on the machine was demagnetized. It'll take a couple of days to get everything back in order. You think someone didn't want us to make any calculations for a while? Or do any radiation research. They got into the specimen vault. All the materials will have to be replaced. But that isn't all. Take a look at this. Hmm. Why, this is the, the photon chamber. You, you found the mistake. I didn't. I didn't touch this diagram. I know you haven't. Someone has made a correction in this blueprint. A change has been made in the wiring, causing a feedback. I tried it, Carl. It works perfectly. Now, who or whatever did it, made these changes, certainly knew what he was doing. There must be some connection between all of this and the sphere. Well, Matthews didn't seem to feel so. He seems to think it's all a series of coincidences. <laughs> He's going to have a tough time convincing the people of that. There's a mob down at the sheriff's office demanding something be done before everybody is killed. Well, not a soul's been scratched. Not yet, anyway. I don't think anybody will be. Then you do think we have a visitor from space? Yes, I do. I think it's some form of a... Sorensen speaking. Listen, Sorensen. The people of Oak Ridge are demanding that I drop a bomb or something on that sphere. I can't seem to convince them that nothing but their imagination has come out of that thing. How can you be sure of that? Well, I can't be certain. Of course, I'll need proof. You've been able to learn anything? Yes, a few things, but I don't think we can call it concrete proof. I'm going on the assumption that some sort of a creature has come out of that sphere. Dr. Sorensen, it's a little hard for me to assume that some creature, as you call it, could have got past all those guards without being seen. Why not? Now, there's no reason to believe that life from some other planet necessarily resembles or acts the same as we do. I suggest we wait and see what develops. I'm certain that we'll find out what this is all about when it or they are ready to let us know. You do whatever you please. I'm certainly not going to wait and do nothing while all this panic and destruction goes on. And I don't intend letting that sphere sit up there without knowing what's inside it. We're moving it out of the canyon at dawn with or without your aid. Good night. Well, he's still planning on moving it up to the military post. I don't need a calculating machine to tell you what his chances are. Yeah, I know what you mean. I guess we better go up there and see what we can do to help. Here, yeah, better put this on. It's pretty cold up there in Stone Canyon. What do you got here, Carl? You own half a dash free? <laughs> you know how it is. Don't get home much anymore these days. You looking for something? Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Remember this? The MX-1, we called it. Of course I remember. Would you mind telling me how this is going to help us on this project? You'll see. What's that all about? I set a trap for him. I wanted to see what he looked like. Look, he's down in the radiation and research room. Well, how'd you know it'd come here? Just a calculated guess. Look, Rich. There's our cosmic man. Like a solid mass, and yet he's not solid. Like a creature made of matter, and yet, yet more like antimatter. Emitting rays rather than reflecting them. Like the reverse of everything as we know it. Like X-ray pictures of things we can't see. Only these are unknown rays. What's it doing in there? What do you suppose it's after? It's snooping, I think. You know, I, I believe this thing is an observer. Come on, let's sneak down and see him. Oh. Now what? What caused that? Too late. Apparently our friend didn't want to make contact yet. Well, we better get up to the lodge. Come on. I'm sorry I was late. I had a rather important visitor. Oh, the thing from space, I suppose. As a matter of fact, yes. That's okay. A... What do you have to say about all this? We didn't discuss it. You mean you didn't make friends? Or maybe the thing can't talk? What's that? Some kind of secret weapon? You might consider it a secret weapon. Good. Better get it up to the canyon just in case your friend objects to having his ship moved. Good 
Good morning. Where's Candy? Up yet? No. Uh, no, not yet. Uh, we waited up for you. I mean, Ken stayed up late, hoping you might come back last night. I guess you were too busy with other things. Well, I thought you'd have your hands full with the, the military and all. Maybe you shouldn't think so much. Some things can't be calculated. I can make a mistake. I'm human. You are hard to figure out. <laughs> now who's calculating? I guess that makes us even. What about the Colonel? Oh, he's really very nice. Just sensitive. You mean stubborn. Oh, no, that's not it. He's afraid, I think. Afraid of you mostly and what you stand for. He's afraid you're right and that he's wrong. I think he'd like to admit you're right, but he's too proud. It seems to be a common problem today. Everybody's afraid of scientists. They seem to feel we know some sort of deep, dark secret about the mysteries of life. Really, they're not afraid of what the scientists know. They're afraid of what they themselves don't know. All we're trying to do is find the answers to a lot of questions. I know, I... Well, I, I have to go. I'll, I'll see you later. Uh, will you tell uh, Ken I won't keep him waiting again? I'll tell him. I did not want to frighten you. You are Catherine Grant? Forgive me. I, I didn't hear your car drive in. My vehicle is parked beyond. I desire lodging in this place. Will you be able to accommodate me? Well, you see... Are you one of the scientists they're expecting? It is possible that Dr. Sorensen is expecting me, yes. I guess I'm a little nervous. Won't you please come in? You just missed Dr. Sorensen. He left for the canyon only a moment before you came. Yes, I know. I could drive you up there in a few minutes. I've got a few things to do here. It will not then... be necessary. I can do my work as well here. I will see the doctor when he returns. I see. Well, you can have your choice of rooms. We've got very few guests this time if of year. If you please. I would like complete privacy. I am much in need of rest. Would you like breakfast, coffee, or anything, Thank Mr. Thank you, no. It's a very nice, quiet room in the back. I'll show you. Do not bother. I shall find the room. You have a child who does not walk. Of course. Mother! Are you there? It's getting up time. I'll be there in a minute, Kenny. I'll be trying to move that whole mountain. Cost about the same thing, Major. I would now, sir. Little crew standing by? Yes, sir. Best men and equipment. Ox and aluminum torches. It'll cut through anything.
Ditch the equipment. Yes, sir. All right, men. Get it out of here. Have any luck, Colonel? No, it's some kind of impervious metal or whatever it's made of. It's like the nose cone of an ICBM. It'll withstand temperatures of over 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, Colonel, have a minute. Thanks. Our cutting equipment develops pretty close to that temperature. We didn't make a mark on it. You know anything that could do the job? How about this plasma jet I've been hearing about? What's that? I never heard of it. You will before long. Plasma jet can reach over 30,000 degrees. With it, you can vaporize that or any other kind of matter. It's still in the experimental stage. Think you could take it out of the experimental stage long enough to cut into that thing? I could, but I wouldn't. I didn't think you would. Look, Colonel, supposing you were to land an airplane in a remote district in Africa, an emergency landing, would that give the natives the right to tear your plane apart because they were curious about something they'd never seen before? I don't want to destroy this thing or anything else. I just want to know what's inside. I want to know why it's here, how it got here, and where it came from. Well, we're after the same answer. Yes, but at least I'm trying to do something about it. Well, so am I. I want to run some experiments. I need your help. Go ahead, Sorensen. Sergeant. Listen to this, Colonel. All morning, those waves have been passing to and from the sphere. What is it, do you know? I'm not sure yet, but it follows a definite pattern. I've made a sound recording of it. We might be able to break it down later. Could be a communication signal. Yes, it could be. What's the function of that ray? Well, we know that there's an electromagnetic field around that sphere. We've been checking on it all morning. We found out that the brighter the light, the stronger the charge. Here, look at this indicator. All right, Sergeant. 12 volts from one reflector. Do you know what this could mean? Well, I don't. What does it mean? It means that if we knew enough about that field, we could operate every electrical appliance in Oak Ridge by sunlight. Do you mean it converts light waves into electricity just like that? Just like that. What would happen to an electrical current? It should convert to light. I don't know. We're going to find out. Airman Gray, take this equipment out to the sphere. Yes, sir. That thing might become a blinding light. You better have your men turn their backs, or better yet, they cover. From a 12-volt battery? I don't know everything. That's why I'm using only 12 volts. Tell them to take cover. Yes, sir. All right, men, take cover! What are you thinking? You act like a man who's about to set off a bomb. Sorry, Carl. It's all right, Rich. Better take cover of the others. Sure. Wasn't grounded.
You all right? Yes, I'm all right. Well, we know one thing. It doesn't conduct electricity. It converts it into sound waves. Yeah, we know something else. Proper current crossing that field would cause a sonic blast that would wipe a city off the face of the earth. You really believe something's come out of that thing? I'm fairly certain of it. We've got to find out what it wants here. With powers like this, we'd be in serious trouble if faced with an invasion. We're unprepared for anything like this. Maybe there isn't going to be an invasion. Well, maybe not, but we've got to find out what it wants. Listen, Sorensen. Maybe I understand your viewpoint, but try to look at it this way. Supposing one of these spheres landed somewhere in Russia, you can't deny the value of this thing's technology. You don't think our enemy would waste any time getting at it? Suppose they got the answers first. That's a good point, Colonel. We can't afford to sit and wait. As far as I can see, we haven't any choice. General Nolan is standing by, sir. He wants to know what all the delay is about. Well, tell him I'll explain. Tell him I've run it. Well, I'll tell him myself. And suppose this phantom atom contains particles of a mass of M minus vibrating along the axis X under a force of Kx toward the origin. You know the equation, Rich. Got it. If left alone, those particles should vibrate with a constant amplitude and frequency of 6 minus forever, right? Right. Right. But they won't be left alone if they should uh, pass through an electrical or a magnetic field containing the right properties, will they? A deflector. Right. Right. But a deflector like that would be sure death. It would split your phantom atoms wide open. They'd scatter the particles. Vibrating out of frequency, they'd collide with each other. Who knows what might happen? Like in a cyclotron? Well, almost, but not quite. You see, we're dealing in opposites here. Everything's in reverse, you might say. Right? It's about right. Right. Rich, uh, I've forgotten. What's the, uh, what's the speed of light? Well, uh, let's see. I didn't know. I know. 186,000 miles per second. Right? Right. Right. And look, Ken, moving at that speed, how far would a spaceship travel in one year? About six trillion miles. That's one light year. That's right. Right. You know how far it is to the nearest star? Alpha Centauri. Four light years, I think. You think right. Ken, I wouldn't be surprised if you're the first man to reach that star. How about it? No. I want to go to the moon. The moon? Why the moon? Because it's not so far away. I hate to break up this conference, but it's time for your dinner, young man. Well, I'm glad you didn't come any sooner. We couldn't get along without his assistance. Thank you, Ken. Thank you very, very much. That's all right. Dr. Sorensen, is that where you think the cosmic man's from? Alpha Centauri? But I didn't... What makes you think I think there is such a man? Mother said you did. She said she heard you talking to Colonel Matthews about the possibility. She said she bet you're right, too. Well, I didn't know you were a betting woman. I... Ken, what have I made you... I never knew you took to kids so well, Carl. You remember what I said before? Yes, I remember. I don't get any ideas. Besides, she's partial to the military. Not from where I was watching. Speaking of, I wonder what's happened to our colonel. Well, I imagine he's quite busy explaining to the general what went on out there this afternoon. How'd you like that job? No, thanks. You know, the general seemed pretty upset and quite confused about the whole thing. And he's going to be more confused before the night's over, I think. More observations, you mean? Hmm. You know, it apparently only operates at night. Well, that's part of the answer. Look, he's obviously partially visible during the daytime, but totally invisible at night. You think it knows what we've been doing? Yes, I do. The message is relayed from the sphere, from a master brain transmitter, but how? Mental telepathy, maybe? I don't know. Are you going to tell the colonel about your magnetic deflector idea? 
You know what he'll do. Yes, I know. I won't tell him unless I have to. Hmm. It's getting late. You're getting nervous. Well, I hoped we'd make contact before now, before dark. Afraid something might go wrong tonight, some serious damage. Is that it? Well, I don't know. I, I hope not. If I could only break this thing down, if I could contact the cosmic man, if I could communicate somehow. It's the Colonel. General Nolan's with him. I thought he would be. Look, Rich, will you do me a favor? Go out and get the MX-1 and set it up in the living room. We're going to have a surprise party. A surprise party? Of course, it's a great idea. Now then, if this thing does as you say, Sorensen, any one of a dozen of these installations might be the target for tonight. The destruction of any one of them would seriously cripple our military strength. We can't be sure that the thing is still in this area at all. Hmm? You mean it might turn up in another part of the state or country? Possible, but not very likely. The sphere deliberately chose this area in which to land, and this would imply that it was after something in this vicinity. Hmm. Last night's reports would indicate that it was particularly interested in our ion propulsion and our radiation research. Now, these three plants are particularly interested in that work. And there is a chance to stop your cosmic man. We'll set a trap, capture him. What kind of a trap, General? We'll set up a whole battery of lights, force the thing to surrender at gunpoint. How do you know that guns offer any threat to this form of life? I don't know. But I'll be prepared to find out if it becomes necessary. And if that doesn't work, we have something else that will. Professor Steinholz has been working on it. Steinholz? When did he get into this operation? No offense was intended, Sorensen. We just felt that two heads were better than one. He arrived from Washington this morning. Well, what did he have to say about it? He hasn't said. He's to contact us here shortly. He must be the stranger who arrived this morning. What stranger? Well, I didn't get his name. He said he was one of the scientists. He wanted a room so he could rest. He didn't want to be disturbed. Where is he? I guess he's still in his room. I wasn't expecting any visitors. Couldn't be Dr. Steinholz. I talked with him just before coming up here. I wonder if he's still here. Well, what will you do with the cosmic man after you capture him, General? What do you mean, son? Hmm? I mean, would you lock him up and make him tell all the secrets of his world? Yes, General. Just what would you do with him if you did capture him? Suppose he was to offer you some kind of an ultimatum. Are we prepared to make a deal? Remember, we're not dealing with an intelligence on our own level. I think you underestimate our intellect, Dr. Sorensen. I believe we are prepared to discuss universal relations with your cosmic man. Well, supposing he's not able to contact us to tell us the nature of his business. I know what. You could build a space chamber for him. You know what I mean, Dr. Sorensen. Suppose he can't live in our atmosphere. You could figure out how to duplicate his own so he'd be at home here. Then you both could figure out a way how to talk to each other. Hmm. You think something like that would work, Sorensen? Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it up to the National Academy. Hey, wait a minute. That won't help us right now. Matthews, radio headquarters. Have them send some floodlights up to those plants and a squad of well-armed men. Hey, what's that thing? This is the MX number one. It uh, might be called a secret weapon. Secret weapon? What is it? It's a weapon for men of vision to combat the problems of outer space. Present for you, Ken. Mother! A real telescope! Look! Really, Dr. Sorensen, this is hardly the time for... We've got to find that infernal cosmic man. What happened? Do not be alarmed. I am here in the darkness. It is better that I remain concealed. You do not understand my appearance. Who are you? I demand you state your business here. Your demands mean nothing to me. It has been decided, however, that I will speak to those of you who have expressed words and thoughts of understanding. You, Dr. Sorensen, are engaged in a difficult field of endeavor. You search for truth in a society who fears the truth. But you and others like you are the hope of the world. You must hold to your convictions. 
You must continue your work. The fate of your civilization will become your responsibility. What's he talking about? What's he mean, the fate of our civilization? Come out of there so I can see you. As you wish, General. We're not concerned with your international politics, General. It is your philosophy that concerns us. But that would be of no importance why you're not about to embark on interspatial, yes, intergalactic travel. But the peoples of your society must develop a new concept of thinking, adopt and practice new values and principles of living together before they will be ready to encounter the civilizations of the universe. You don't expect me to believe your only concern is in the mental attitude of the people? You are right, General. There are other motives, but they offer you no great problem. I am one of many cosmonauts. Our purpose is manifold. We travel far, searching out and exploring new worlds of which there are countless millions in this universe. Many observers such as I have visited this planet before. Many more will come in the future. What we learn of life forms, atmospheres, raw materials, all this knowledge is transmitted to all the advanced civilizations in the free cosmos. Some worlds are old. Their peoples must migrate to younger planets where living conditions are similar. Some worlds are lifeless, but have an abundance of life-giving material which can be shared by all. Your vast oceans, for instance, have been mined for centuries by a society from a far distant world. The materials they remove will never be of any use to any living creature of your world. The cycle of your daylight, your atmosphere, impose certain limitations upon my operations. It is necessary that I leave your world at the break of day. But I must ask you, General, not to attempt the interference which you contemplate. I shall cause no harm unless provoked. It must mean Steinholz. Wait a minute. I want to know your plans. It is better for all that you do not know. Stop. One more move and I'll fire. Gray, quick, get out there. Try to keep track of them. Sergeant, radio the base. Have every available man stationed around those atomic plants. Have all roads leading from this area blocked. Telephone General, it's Dr. Steinholz. Says it's urgent. Good. It's about time. Maybe he's got the answer. What are you going to do now? I don't know. Try to get to Steinholz before he gets the equipment he needs, I guess. Think he has it figured out? Well, if I know Steinholz, he's got it figured out all right. You do know, then. You know how the cosmic man can be destroyed. Yes, I know. We've got to stop him before he gets to the magnets that he needs to do this experiment. Come on. Sure looks bad for Dr. Sorensen and the Cosmic Man, doesn't it, Mom? It looks bad. But I'm still betting on him. I am, too. I see. Thank you very much. An army truck hauled those electromagnets away from the atomic plant over an hour ago. They must be up there by now. It looks like Steinholz had to figure it all right. The general holds all the aces. Unless we can find our cosmonaut before dawn. That will solve the problem. Well, maybe we can get him to the sphere before the general is ready for him. Come on. Right. Sergeant, where's General Nolan? I've got to see him. It's important. He's not here, sir. I know you know where he is. Now tell me, where is he? Well, he's up in Stone Canyon. Never mind, Sergeant. Colonel, you can't go through with this plan. Don't you understand? You may be destroying the only opportunity we'll ever have of establishing friendly relations with friendly. the... Friendly? Look here, Sorensen, I'll show you about friendly relations. Rocket Propulsion Incorporated, 7.35 p.m. Contamination supply of liquid hydrogen and other exotic fuels, cause unknown. But we know, don't we, Sorensen? National Electric, 8.45 p.m. Radioactive material thorium, actinium, and uranium exposed to bombardment of mysterious cosmic rays. Delivery of order of atomic reactors postponed indefinitely. 
mysterious cosmic rays. Does that sound like friendly relations? Anybody hurt? Any casualties? Fortunately not, but the loss was in the millions. I hope you realize that. All basic elements. He's evidently been running a complete test in every atom we know. And a few we don't know, it looks like. Call it what you will, no matter how you put it, the thing's an international menace. I think you're taking this too seriously, Colonel. All those materials can be replaced. And as for those new developments, they may be obsolete in a year or two anyway. The important thing is that no one was killed and no one was hurt. What does that prove? People didn't happen to be in the way, that's all. It proves a whole lot to me. It proves that they know what they're doing. It proves that they could render us a completely helpless society anytime they wished and without killing a soul. That's more than we can do. The atom bomb, you mean? I know all about that, Sorensen. I know you must have a guilty conscience because of your contribution to Hiroshima. Well, you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to have any part of it. You put a magnetic field around that sphere, you're going to have more on your conscience than an A-bomb. Sergeant, don't let this man out of your sight. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Sorensen, but I can't afford any more interference. That was a very nice thing you did for Ken. I wanted to thank you earlier, but... I like him. I heard what the Colonel said. It just... Isn't there anything you can do, Carl? Not unless we can find the Cosmic Man before morning. Then I'm not sure. I'm not sure about anything anymore. Maybe I've been wrong all the time. Maybe I've been telling myself the wrong things just because I wanted them to go that way. Maybe... Maybe the Cosmic Man is an evil force. You don't think that's true, and I know it. Neither does Dr. Ritchie. I don't either. Remember what he said about how you're searching for the truth while everyone around you is afraid of the truth? About how you have to hold on to your convictions? That's what you've got to do, Carl. You know you're right. So do I. I'm betting on it. Kathy, let me tell you something about betting. The odds are against you in a long shot. I know I can prove it mathematically. You may be right. But think of how much I'll win if my dark horse comes in. Thanks. Now, don't say anything. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Checkmate. What did you do then? Two men at once. That's Castling. Fine. Oh, you're doing okay right now. Did you say check me? Check. Ken, what are you doing up at this hour? Who are you? We've been playing chess and all kinds of games. I don't understand. You've no right to. Ken, you should have called me. It's the middle of the night. Ken must have his rest. It was my fault, Mother. I asked him to stay. We were having such fun. Yes, we were having fun, weren't we? The boy has given me much pleasure and a needed diversion from my work. I thought you had gone. No one has seen you all day. Did you talk to Dr. Sorensen? Yes. We communicated earlier in the evening. But I didn't want to go without becoming better acquainted with your boy. I see. You're leaving then? Yes, very soon. I have far to travel and must start early. I've already stayed too long. Forgive me if I've inconvenienced you. Perhaps we can continue our games at some future time. Goodbye, my boy. Goodbye. And remember to practice your chess game. Yes, I will do that. Thank you for teaching me how to play. Goodbye to you both. He sure learned the game fast. But I beat him every time. We talked about all kinds of things. He sure does know a lot. Almost as much as Dr. Sorensen. But not quite, is that it? Now you go to sleep. It's getting late. All right. But remember to wake me up in time to go to Stone Canyon. I want to see the Cosmic Man leave. Do you think he will? The General doesn't think so. Dr. Sorensen will find a way to help him. I bet he's got things fixed up right now. I sure wish I could help.
calm down. I'll wake you in time. Promise? Promise. Be afraid. Carl? Oh, good morning, Cat. Carl, I'm worried about something. Uh, so am I. I had hoped the cosmic man would come back before dawn. Do you think it's possible that that man is... He's so strange. His voice, his face... Well, what man? What are you talking about? That scientist, that doctor, whatever his name is. He was in Ken's room. And they were playing chess. Is he still there? No, he left. Said he had to leave early. He had to travel far. He did say, though, that he'd had his talk with you, did he? Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Will you take me to his room? Sorry, sir. I can't let you out of my sight. Well, then you have to come with me. That's the bag he was carrying this morning when he arrived. Well, that's mine. I've had it for years. Come on. Hard to see if they've seen anything. Hurry. He can't have gone far. Maybe we can catch him. Carl! Carl! Ken is gone. He's taken Ken. You must have taken him as a hostage. No one has left the parking lot, sir. Is there any other way to get to Stone Canyon from here? Yes. There's a trail through the hills. It isn't far that way. If we hurry, maybe we can get there before he does. Stay here with Kathy. Sergeant, clear those roadblocks. Taking Ken prisoner, he's headed this way in the back trail. Major, you heard? Yes, sir. Sarson, if this is a trick, this is no trick. At least not for me. Still think your man's harmless, Doctor? Closer, any of you. If you do as I say, no harm will be done to this boy. Carl. Have no fear. You will turn off the electrical apparatus. He's outsmarted us. All right, turn off the magnetic field. Everybody, get back. Wait, Kathy. Wait. If anything happens to Ken, I'll... <laughs> I will leave. 
leave your planet now. For the present, my work here is finished. If I should return in the future, perhaps we will meet with a better understanding. You remain where you are till I have gone. We must not let him escape, General. We must learn the secrets of this object. Now is our chance. He must not reach his ship, General. He'll come back. 